All right, good morning, guys. So, just got in the office and I've got a package waiting for me. <clears throat> Actually, no, I had to go and pick this up. I know what's in here. We're gonna do the unboxing. Uh, it's actually the jigs. I think there might be something else inside. I'm not sure, but we'll take a look at it, okay? Let's open it up. All right. Oh, we've got one Jenny box. We've got the pizza box. I'm not sure what's in here. The Jendi card. So we've got a base here. Good creep, this thing's heavy. All right, and this is basically everything else. First thoughts, I mean, this thing just feels so heavy and solid. Oh, that feels nice too. There's no play in this, that's pretty cool. Uh, the early concerns was that there was actually side-to-side -side play, but I'm kind of moving it right, I'm trying to move it right now, but it's it's not moving unless I really want to, in which case I'll just push it. Um, it kind of pushes it in, and the detents pop out of place, lets it roll. There you go. It's really solid, this thing's heavy as heck. Makes my uh, hapstone feel really light. You got the clamps. And they come in these kind of boxes, uh, carton things. Here's some fittings, screws. I think this is what you uh, screw the, 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 the base to, the acrylic base to. It's a lot of bases, words. <laughs> You've got a guide rod. You've got a tool to assemble everything. This is the base, the acrylic base and the pizza box. Half of me wishes there's an actual pizza in here. Oh, well, you've got the stone holder. Oh man, this feels smooth. And this is the execu drive. That's quite smooth actually. All right, you've got of course the, uh, the knife clamp bar, a digital inclinometer. Okay, and I think that's it, it's empty. Uh, so this is the full complete set. So you get some stones with it. I'll just take it all out so that you can see it. You've got the 180 Sohiro. This is for really hogging off steel. If you really need to reprofile, remove a lot of material, this is what you're gonna use. You've got your 600 Chisera. Uh, this actually lasts quite a long time. It's also rather on the aggressive side, pretty cool, very nice. You've got the chocolate bar, 1000 grit. Uh, this is great for people who wanna start refining um, and not you know, blow out your wallet, this will help you a lot. Also, a 1000 grit Chisera. So, this is gonna last longer than this guy, okay? So this is something that you start out with, you're, you're gonna practice with once you get a little bit better and you wanna use the good stuff and use a Chisera. And of course, you've got your 3000 grit Chisera as well. And this is the highest grit that comes in this package. If you're on the 5000 and 10,000 grit, um, you know, of course, uh, we here in Malaysia, uh, we also do carry it as well, you can get it from us. Start out with the base first, because you actually need to assemble this guy to this guy because the screws on the underside before you mount it to the acrylic block that guy would go on here like this ah oh, that's a nice piece of acrylic now i'm wishing i had him like put my logo in there <laughs> with the laser engraver that would have been cool put the legs in first oh this is the underside Let's go in. <clears throat> All right, so this was something that Thomas was talking about. If the platform, like this table is not even, and it does that, what you can do is you just lift this side up a little bit. Okay, and this side up. There you go. No more, no more movement, no more give. Man, this thing's heavy. Hey dude, can you pass me my Leatherman? Thank you. Alright. Now we just go and install this. And it just screws in. So you can actually screw it in all the way. Uh, turn this around okay find the exact alignment that you want it's gonna be square onto this tighten that down and that's it so I'm just 
your fellow person like that. Now this is one big, long and thick rod. I know there's a joke in there. Irfan just gave me the look. <laughs> I'm going to take off the V7 rod and show you a difference. Okay. I've been using the V7 for a really long time. It served me very well. And when I first got it, I was like, this guy is substantial. Now this just dwarves it. <laughs> I mean, that is a huge difference. Right, so then you put this tree here. What you do is you put the bumper on the end. Okay. Let's install the jaws. So apparently this is actually pretty easy uh, installation as well. Just loosen the front clip up until you can just move that aside like this. Put it in. We got the barbell screws. There you go. Okay, there you go. This guy as well. Yep. Right, so you can just loosen this and you can tighten it down your knife on it and there you go let's uh let's pop a knife in <laughs> see how it is all right so you can move it closer together you just want to clamp the blade in maybe right in the center i mean this is a small knife so you don't exactly need all the support that this thing gives you so the ends of the clamp already have a rubber thing on it this is to protect your blade, you don't want to scratch it. Now, one cool thing about this style of setup is you probably won't have to tape your blade up as often. The, you, the, the reason I had to do it on my V7 was, what happens is as you sharpen, a lot of slurry gets on the table, the table of the sharpening system. And between that slurry and the table, uh, sorry, between the knife and the table that you have on it, the slurry gets in between. The slurry usually has some abrasive and just scratches out the blade. If you're working on an expensive knife, that is a big no-no, especially if it's not your knife, it's a customer's knife, so you don't want to mess up like that. Okay, this is another cool thing. If you wanted even more range, you could do it by extending this thing like up to here. I guess you'd need to. I'm not actually going to sharpen the whole knife right now. It's going to take way too long, but for proof of concept, I'm just going to ensure that I found the angle accurately, okay, by removing the sharpie marks and that'll be pretty much it. You just have to keep on uh, removing material, refining, and you'll be able to see that it does its job really well. Okay, that's a little bit too high angled. Drop this down. Yeah, that might work. If I wanted to go even lower, but the executive drives bottomed out, you can actually just loosen the screw behind here. Tighten it back, drop the entire assembly. And you've got even more adjustability from there. So one nice thing about this is because of the height it's at, you can actually look at the blade from this angle. Just put a stone up on here like this. So all you have to do is look at it from the side and we'll just adjust it, kind of eyeball it. And just look at how the stone lays on the edge. And like the right there looks just about good. Let's do a quick pass. Now we'll see that course yep, it's in focus okay it's removing material but I think the angle is still a little bit too high so what we'll do is we'll just drop this down a little bit more using the exacti drive and just go at it again so yeah that does look a little bit better but you know it's a thick blade I'm just gonna sharpie it up again so you can get a nice clean reading so I'm gonna drop it a little bit more there we go. Then you raise this a bit. Nope. Drop it some more. I like my high angle stuff. <laughs> Sorry, low angle stuff. So there we go. Right, from the tip, very nice angle height. Okay, it's good. All the way to the back. Of course, we 
sharpen it a little bit more and you'll see that the height is actually really nice adjustments really easy uh, one more thing I think I want to check out is what's the range what's the usable range as we know if the edge sits further away from the system the angle is going to drop so I'm going to set this up right now for the highest angle that you could probably get uh, of course your mileage may vary and I've pushed the blade as far in as possible where the stone can still touch the edge and we'll just zero this angle finder okay pop it up here and you're getting about 37 37.1 uh, degrees now this is uh, on the website it says it can reach up until 40 I'm pretty sure I could push it out but I'm not gonna do it right now however you're never gonna really sharpen a knife to be 37 degrees per side that's just ridiculous all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the blade all the way out right now as far out as I can and I'm gonna drop the system all the way down again to a point where the stone still touches the edge and we'll see what angle we are there All right, so this is uh, kind of, I could probably just go a little bit more. There's still a slight gap in between the stone and the clamp. Uh, stone's still definitely touching the knife, so that's cool. Let's just see how far this goes and how much I can push it in a while. Let's just zero that again. All right, pop this up. So we're sitting at about 10.8, 10.7. Let's see me drop it just a little bit more. Oh, uh, the stone's lifted off the edge, so I'm just going to back it back in a bit. So, I think it's safe to say 10.2, 10.3, uh, all the way up to about, what was it, 37? That's an excellent range. Alright, so let's wrap this up. Is this worth it? Should you spend 3,500 ringgit on this system? Or should you get something a lot cheaper, like maybe the V7? Short answer, yeah. It's absolutely worth it. I mean, the stones alone, the accessories, the peripherals that you get with it makes it really, really worth it, uh, especially with the price that you're going to pay for a V7 anyway. In terms of versatility, the V7 pulls just ahead just by a bit, but how often do you have a 20 inch uh, blade that you need to sharpen? At most, from what I see, uh, knives that I have to sharpen reach up about 10 to 12 inches and that's about it. And this guy is supposedly capable of that. I've not tried it yet and definitely will. But I'm told that people have tried a 10 inch blade on it, no problems. So yeah, it's also easier to use. You just have to clamp it in, put the stone in, find your angle and just go to town on it. It's a lot easier than having to hold the blade with the other hand, especially when you're in your deburring process, when you're trying to do one pass on one side and you want to flip to the other side, do another pass on the other side and so on and so forth. This just makes it so much easier than having to lift it off the table, which is magnetized. It's, uh, it's actually a good thing if it's magnetized. But you have to fight the magnet, flip it to the side, put it in, adjust it, make sure it's set at the right angle, set properly, do your pass, put it back to the other side and repeat it, I don't know, eight or nine times, depending on uh, what your process is. With this, it's easy, just flip it. It's all there, it's all set. Again, very solid. Not gonna have any issues with it. All right, so comparing this to something like the TS Prof. Now, if you took the TS Prof's top line, which this guy's in direct competition with, it will set you back about a thousand US dollars. I'm not sure how much it's gonna be when it reaches here. A uh, thousand US dollars is already 430, 440 ringgit. Uh, they do give you some stones with it and all the other accessories. But again, uh, this is cheaper than that. All right, so I do hope that you guys found the intro to the jigs useful. If you do like it, do give us a like and subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your fellow knife nuts. And if you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments below. You can just DM me direct. Uh, you guys know where to find me. Stay safe, stay sharp.